So at 9.07 tonight, I sent one of my sponsees a text. Um, he had sent it this morning to me about he found a sponsee and uh, he had mentioned that he needs it to stay sober and for that he's grateful, which is totally true. But I added something to his, to his little thing at the end. I'm like, not only will working with others keep you sober, the deep internal gift of humanness is invaluable. It does something to anger. It heals resentment. It dissipates fear. It has deep and effective effects far beyond your comprehension. And that is the truth. Like the 12 steps give me a lot, but the 12 step working with others gives me everything. I have learned more about me and about you by working one-on-one -on -one with another alcoholic than I have through any of the step work. And the step work is of prime importance and it, it reveals so much. But if I really, really want to grow and I really want to learn and I really want to feel what the fourth dimension actually feels like, and you don't know what the fourth dimension actually feels like till you know what the fourth dimension feels like. I thought I knew what the fourth dimension felt like because I, I know anything. I know what everything meant when I first got here. I could tell you what honesty was. I could tell you what serenity was. I could tell you what peace was. I could tell you what the spiritual awakening probably meant. I knew, I knew it all. But you don't know what you don't know till you know it. And what's more important than what I know is what I don't fucking know. And the working the 12th step with another alcoholic has gifts beyond words. Um, and I'm going to say, like, and that's where true humility is really gained. And some people need to work with others more than others. I'll say that too. Some people can get away with some of your basic service, chairing meetings, you know, doing a little GSR work, this, that, and the other thing. But there's a lot of people that that's not enough. And, uh, and to me, it's the greatest gift that I've ever gotten in my life, period, at all. You know, it works when all other activities fail. Well, what are the other activities? Well, prayer and meditation and inventory and all this other shit. It works when all that shit fails. And what I find hilarious is I, I see people struggle all the time in this program and they think they've done the steps. And then... I'm like, well, are you working with others? Well, no, no, I don't, I don't want to kill somebody or I don't have the experience. I don't have this. I don't have that. And I'm, I'm like, dude, it works when all other activities fail. And the 12th step isn't 12 stepped until you've taken someone through the book. It's like a step 11 and a half. And once you take your first person through the book, then you go, holy shit, you know, it says the, the message that can hold and interest these alcoholics must have depth and weight. The depth is experience. We're all experienced. We all have the experience. And the weight is, is if you're sober and you've done the 12 steps and you've had a personality change, then you have the weight. Well, I don't have the experience. Well, how do you get experience without experience? Right? And uh, so the 12th step is the greatest gift ever in Alcoholics Anonymous, in my opinion. Um, talking about fear here, fear, you know, there's clear cut directions in the book. It tells me, I ask why I have the fear. So I do some inventory and I ask why I have the fear. I ask myself, is it rational or is it irrational fear? Is it, is it a fear to help preserve me? God preservation to help me stay alive? Or is it something made up in my head? Fancied or real? Well, I found out usually they're fancied and then I manifest them. So I ask myself why I have the fear. And then it says we ask God to remove the fear. And then it says we direct our attention to what he would have us be. Well, what's God going to have me be? He's going to have me be something. What's God's will for me? God's will for me is to do what's in front of me right now. You know, um, just as I think he would have me do, does he enable me to match calamity with serenity? God will always match world calamity, my brain calamity, with serenity when I follow the directions. And then at the end of that directions, it says, we commence to outgrow fear. And that's my experience. I follow the directions and, and, I, don't, and I don't fuck with the directions. The, and whether I think the directions are working or not, I don't have a choice. It's called the ritual. Ritual, 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 and eventually spiritual comes. Ritual, 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 spiritual. I ride spiritual for a while, maybe a month or two, and then it's back to rituals because all hell's fucking caving in on me. 
But it doesn't matter. It's not about what I feel or what I think. It's what I do. What am I doing today? It's never about how I feel. It's about what I do. And then what am I doing to set up the next moment? Because every moment in my life sets me up for the next moment. Am I going to dwell in fear and I'm going to dwell in self-pity and morbid reflection? Because if I do, I'm only setting myself up to set me up for the next moment of self-pity and and selfishness and and more resentment and shit. Or am I going to take the decision in my hands and take a different stand and say, you know what, fear, fuck you. I got some I got some ability here and I'm going to change it right now. And it might not feel like it's changing right now, but if you want to work a program of recovery, that's what we do. And it's like a rewiring process and after a while while this rewiring process actually works. Very very few times throughout a month do I go into a depression or or morbid reflection or or anything. Why? Cuz I dedicate my life to helping others. There's not a day that goes by where I don't work with others. And that dissipates fear and it makes actually what's most important in life is work is helping another person. And when you understand and the deep compassion that comes from it, fears start falling away. Shit that you're always fearful becomes not important because it's actually not important. But what is important is helping another person find their true self and and understand who they actually are. And it's not all these other things. What kind what would I be like if I actually knew who I was? It's a good question. What would you be like if you actually knew who you were? It's fucking big. Anyway, thanks for asking me to share.